Making stuff for the internet means I've had to learn to deal with every kind of feedback, from the kind and supportive to the death threats and hateful. And this is kind of what you sign up for when anyone puts their creative work out there, whether it's in the form of movie reviews in newspapers, art teachers at school, or indeed internet comments. And so the phrase, hate is gonna hate, is helpful. Now, it came initially from hip hop as a way to brush off negativity. And the subtext seems to be that some people are so insecure and weak that they have nothing better to do than to bring other people down. I get it. When I read something horrible about me, I don't want to imagine whoever wrote it as a normal, well-adjusted human being. It's much nicer to think of them as a loser in a basement with no friends just wasting their time. But that's not really working for me anymore. And here's why. When I was in school, I remember leaning over to my friend, joking that the teacher was speaking so much without actually saying anything. I imitated the teacher's fluffy language and my friend was laughing. Now, I'm no comedy genius, so I was pretty happy to be making someone laugh. At the end of the lesson, the class emptied, but the teacher had me stay behind. She tells me she'd heard everything and that if I had a problem with her teaching, I should talk to her directly. Suddenly, I didn't feel so great anymore. That simple confrontation was what it took for me to realize that she was only there to help, didn't deserve to be made fun of, and that I didn't really believe what I was saying. I was mostly just exaggerating to make my friend laugh. So when I hear, hate is gonna hate, it sounds like we're saying, don't worry, their criticisms are not a reflection on you, but a reflection on the person writing them and how sad their life must be. Whereas I think it's mostly a reflection on their environment. For me at school, 10 feet of distance was all it took for me to completely disregard a person's feelings. So now imagine what I might have flippantly exaggerated about if I was literally miles away, behind a keyboard and a username without ever needing to face the person I was talking about. Of course, I'm not excusing the horrible things that people say, but I just don't want to be too quick to shout hater whenever someone says something that I don't want to hear. They probably aren't as bad as their words make them sound, and ignoring all of them would mean missing out on some genuinely constructive feedback. Or think of it this way, there are some people in this world who have such a radically different worldview to me that if they watched something I'd made and all they said was, you know, nice work, I'd actually be a little bit concerned, because I don't want to make stuff that everyone agrees with. And so thinking about all of this has given me two rules about feedback that I want to stick to and you're welcome to call me out if you see me doing these. Number one, when someone says something hateful, I won't retaliate. No snarky reply trying to hit them back or prove them wrong. No sharing it on Twitter to get sympathy. Number two, I won't delete comments. I never have, and so far you guys have been great at marking spam as spam, upvoting what you wanna see, and downvoting or reporting what you don't wanna see. The comments are your space, not mine. Now, at this point, I do have to acknowledge that I'm in a fortunate position. I don't get attacked based on the color of my skin. And I know from talking to women on YouTube that their comment sections are almost always an entirely different kind of place. It's fairly easy for me to say, leave the haters alone, because the vast, vast majority of people that I come into contact with focus on what I'm saying rather than what I look like or my gender, religion, etc. And that, of course, is where it gets to be a more complex issue. But if we're looking for a simplification, here's the smartest advice that I've been given about haters. The more you take to heart the positive remarks, the more you'll take to heart the negative. Or to rephrase it, in order to not be so deflated by the bad feedback, you can't let yourself be too inflated by the good feedback. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSL Guide, and I'll see you next time.